Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. What I want to talk to you about this week is about getting to sleep. It's something that I've come across in most of my clients at one point or another. Um, times when we're overwrought, when we're stressed, when we've got things in our lives that are causing us um, unhappiness, whatever it may be. Um, there's generally a point in time in your life where it's very hard to fall asleep and to have a really good night's sleep. Um, I've had it a number of times in my life. Generally speaking, I sleep very well. I love my sleep. But at times I have found it quite hard. And there's a number of things I do in these situations. So the things that I do, or the things that you can try, and I'm by no means saying that this is a prescriptive way to get to sleep. We're all different. There's all many different reasons as to why we can't get to sleep at certain times in our lives. And it's up to you to play with things to see what works for you. So the things that I'm going to share with you are things that I've tried in the past and things that I've found that work and things that I've heard about as well. So I'm going to talk about the things I've heard about. <laughs> well, just really, it's about, it's quite common sense, really. It's about stimulants. I mean, I don't drink coffee and I very rarely drink tea. Um, so caffeine tends to have quite a big effect on me, I think, because I haven't built up a resistance to it. Um, so I know if I have a couple of cups of tea late in the, at night, if I'm in a sort of situation where sleep is something that's precious to me at that time, then it can very easily be affected. So the first thing if you're struggling to sleep and sleep well is to make sure you cut out all of the stimulants in your life, um, especially around sort of late evening when you're thinking about going to bed. And so that would be coffee, Coca-Cola, um, anything with caffeine in tea, <laughs> if you're like me and a bit of a wuss when it comes to caffeine. Um, I know that people can also get um, stimulated by screen time. So time on your phone, time on your tablet, time watching television. So make sure you switch off from those things a couple of hours before you go to sleep. Also, things like alcohol or smoking cigarettes or anything that is slightly toxic to the body causes the body to work harder, um, which means that it's it's not relaxing into a deep state of um, sleep and rest and recuperation. So any of those things taken before sleep can cause you to have a bad night's sleep. So to me, that's pretty common sense. And most people who've been struggling with sleep will know about those things. But the next few things that I'm going to share with you are things that you might not know about. So the first is actually a tool that I use to help you clear the thoughts in your head. Because any time that you can't sleep, the majority of the time, it's because the thoughts in your head are whizzing around so fast that you can't switch off from them. And the way to sleep is to switch off from them and to actually focus on your body or your surroundings and things like that, and to allow yourself to drift and then fall into sleep. But if you're caught up in your thoughts and you're trying to problem solve or you're worried about this or you're anxious about that, it can be very hard to detach from that. The process I'm going to share with you is a three-step process. First thing is to acknowledge. Acknowledge all the thoughts that are going on in your head. You can either do this on your phone or if you're doing the no screen time thing, you can have a pad and a pencil beside your bed and just write down all the things that you're thinking about. And it doesn't, you know, you don't have to sort of go into great depth. You can just bullet it and then go through those bullet points and make a decision on all of those. So that's the next step is to make a decision, a decision on what you're going to do or when you're going to tackle it. Sometimes it can be quite hard to make a decision on some things because you don't know what decision it is. You, you realise you've got a problem and it's irritating you and it's challenging you and it's causing you to sort of think lots of thoughts about it, but you're not ready to make a decision. So for example, if you are in a relationship and it's not running smoothly and you've tried numerous things and you're not quite sure if it's going to work long term or if it isn't, and you're not quite ready to make that decision yet, but it's something that you're pondering, then the decision you might make would be to make a decision in three weeks, three months, or however long the time frame is, but also to make a decision on what actions you're going to take within that time to make sure that you make the right decision. So your decision, so first of all, is to acknowledge all the thoughts. The second step is to make a decision on those thoughts. The third step is then to let it all go. So it's a choice to keep focusing on something or to choose something else to think about. Um, and it could be anything. I remember as a child, how I used to get myself to sleep was to dream about, you know, if I got wishes from the fairy, what would I use those wishes for? And it would keep me amused for hours. And before I knew it, I was fast asleep and dreaming of fairy castles and goodness knows what else. 
But as an adult, you can do that too. You can play with make-believe. You can think about your ideal future or um, talking about relationships. You could think about what would be your, your perfect relationship. What would be amazing if you could you know, have a fairy wand and wish it right? So those are the three steps to this particular process of clearing your mind so that you can then sleep more peacefully. The other thing that you can do, and it's something that I've actually been using recently, um, and hence why I'm talking about sleep, because <laughs> I had a little problem last week with getting to sleep a couple of nights. Um, there's a wonderful app called Insight Timer, and it has hundreds and thousands of free meditations on it. And I'll put a link to the app down below in the show notes. Um, and on that app, you'll find something called Yoga Nidra. And it's not like normal yoga where it makes you move around. It, what it does is it gets you to focus in on your body into deep relaxation. And it is just, you know, even if you're not actually wanting to fall asleep, but you're just wanting to relax, it is the most blissfully relaxing meditation you can do. And I just love it. Um, there's one in particular that has become my new favourite, and I will also put a link to that in the show notes below as well. And it doesn't fail to get me off to sleep. Um, I just, I find that as soon as I detach from my thoughts and my worries and whatever's going on in my head, um, it just brings me into the most deepest relaxation. And even if I manage to listen to the whole meditation all the way through, which is rare, um, I'm still in such a relaxed state that sleep finds me almost immediately. So those are a few things you can try um, if you're struggling with sleep at the moment. Um, I hope you have success and I wish you a pleasant and sleep filled night. Um, and if you're interested in any of my coaching or my online courses, there's a link to all of that below in the show notes as well. Have a fabulous weekend. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.